Happy Thursday afternoon, everybody, and welcome to uh, the Medusa Daxtermy um, Supply Company's Thursday Afternoon Live. And I'm here with Brett Wingfield, and I'm Tom Matuska, most of you know. And uh, we're going to show you all kinds of things about turkeys today. I think last week um, we demonstrated um, stretching the turkey tail for any of you that want to uh, uh, make it a little bit easier to stretch a turkey tail. We showed a new product, and uh, the product was the Paddle Tailor by Ray Murphy. And this is a a piece of vinyl and it's got numbered, um, numbered lines on it, the symmetrical number lines. And um, we've never used one before. We, if you want to see how to use it, um, look at last week's segment. And uh, it makes stretching a turkey tail and not getting it, um, you know, off-centered and, and not symmetrical. Um, this is kind of a very handy, you can make your own too, but this is vinyl and it washes off and is very sturdy and you can staple to it, pin to it, tape to it, and um, we kind of like this product. Ray Murphy, you did a good job. We like it. And, Lake Gonnering uh, says, hey Tom, how's it going? How do you mount a fish? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, if you want to see how to use the paddle tail, look at last week's segment and um, I, think, I think we did a pretty good job of showing the people. Yeah. Yep. And whether you're doing a um, just the tail mount is kind of what we spent our time on last week. Uh, but even if you're doing a strutting turkey and you want to um, uh, keep the tail real nice and even, um, can't leave that little guy. Um, we did this one also. And the, the difference between what we did last week is we, we stretched the tail, we taped it, we put auto body putty on the quills, and whatever those quills, if you can hold those quills in a position with hardened auto body buddy, that's what these are all going to do. Um, this is a gorgeous tail, uh, does not have a blemish in it, maybe one, um, but uh, that was a real nice tail. Now if we're doing a mount, we will, we want to connect that to the body somehow, so it works good for us just to put a, a forked wire in it, sharpen it, we'll make some little holes in the back of our turkey body and we will just insert it. Yep. So you bet that at a 90 degree I, angle? Yeah, not quite a 90, but yeah, it goes up into here okay. and it should go right on. And once you put that on your turkey, um, we will usually super glue our skin up and around here, super glue our skin up and around here. But that's how we, we do the same thing. We did the tattle tailor on this and um, worked great, worked exceptional. Um, that's almost a perfect band. Do you want this? Oh yeah. Uh, and we talked about talked about last week. If you're stretching your turkey fans, if you're doing a, a fan mount on a board, um, you don't want them curved or they're going to run into the wall. And if you notice, this one has a little bit of an arc to it. It's not perfectly flat like a board. Um, I think it looks nice, but you'll see a turkey probably 90% of the time with a very, very flat tail. And for our tail mounts, that's gonna be sandwiched between a couple pieces of hardwood on the turkey panels, you want them pretty flat or they're gonna run into the wall on you. Uh, this is a board that we make, it's just a piece of masonite um, with a little bit of arc on it. Um, last week, I think that one, we used a piece of styrofoam, just building styrofoam. But this is just little pine done in an arc and uh, stretch the turkey tail on there with the, you can stretch it with your towel tail on there and then just tape it into place. Works real well. We got Jesse Wells who tuned in. He says he hasn't been able to watch in a while and he missed you guys. So welcome back, Jesse. And he can catch up on all of our Yes. Past segments, right? Go to our Facebook page. And Facebook and YouTube. YouTube. If you go to our YouTube channel, Matuska Tax Dreamy Supply Company, you can see all of our previously recorded live videos there, and they are all in order. Um, easy search. And they were talking last week like there's over 100. Yeah, there's a that's lot. A lot. Um, that's a lot. A that's lot. like that's like season one, season two, season yeah. three. I know. Yeah. 52 episodes of. We gotta do that. <laughs> yeah, starting on the top of the show. 
Anyway, um, you're going to have people ask you to um, expand upon the turkey tail mount. Some people want head and breast mounts. And with a head and breast mount, um, you're either going to use a freeze dried head or an artificial head. And uh, this is a really nice uh, artificial head, and they look good, they look real. Um, you can get them unpainted, you can get them painted. Um, you can touch up the paint if you want to. You can even glue little hairs on there, like the turkey has those little yeah. miniature feathers all over his head. And um, we have clay on his eye right now because we were doing some airbrushing. Um, most of this, I think, was done with pan pastels, wasn't it? I believe uh, so. Pan pastels and a little applicator. Mm -hmm. And um, it's real easy. Anybody that's afraid to, um, you know, a little apprehensive about getting an airbrush on a $70 turkey head, um, those little pan pastels and a small micro applicator or a Q-tip works really, really well. They do. Um, so we use these on a lot of our, our turkey mounts. You can also go the freeze dry route and that would be my second choice is um, save the original head, um, send it to a reputable freeze dryer and you will get back, um, some people even will paint them for you. You'll either get back the turkey head that you can paint yourself or you'll get a freeze dried head that they painted for you. Um, and some of these turkey people are awful good at it. You'll, you'll be amazed at the quality of the paint jobs you get back. Just kind of ask around and get a couple references and, and uh, don't be afraid to send them out and have somebody do it. Um, so, like I said, you expand upon the tail mount by adding the, the head and breast. We have a breast form over on this one. That combined with the head, we're going to show you how to put the neck on. And um, people get, people get, uh, they want to add and add and add to these these breast mounts. We have done breast mounts that they wanted a head and breast and tail mount, and that's I don't want to say simple enough. It's a big job. Anything with a turkey is a big job. But we've had people that want to add the wings. They want the wings frame behind it. Now now you just doubled the job. Oh, let's put the feet on there too. Yeah. And they want it on a board. So now you have something as big as a barn door with a tail, wings, a breast, and a head. And they wonder why it costs as much as a strutting turkey. You're missing that. Yeah, you're missing it. Yeah. six inches of the turkey, of the bird. So um, although people can add a lot, a lot to these, um, we're just going to deal with the the head and breast mount today. And uh, to start with, um, these breast mounts, all the manufacturers make them. We carry um, Anthony Eddy and we carry um, Corey Brothers breast mounts. And it's a piece of styrofoam. It's got a slot out of the back. And we have a bondo center that holds our feather. This, this tail kind of has lots of lens, lots of shot holes in it, uh, but that's what it was. It's, it's a little bit of an immature bird. Um, we've got some little short king feathers up here, and uh, but it'll make a nice, nice head and breast mount. But we drilled a couple holes in there. We put that on a mounting stand, and when it's done, that's going to actually screw to the board that's inside of this. So we got a board inside there. And you pre-drilled that? You pre-drilled it. <laughs> pre-drilled uh, so that they can put a screw in the back of sure. it to, and, to attach And it. what works good is if you um, put a screw in, have somebody eyeball it left to white, right, put one screw in, and then you can step back and adjust it before you drill your second pilot hole. Um, that works pretty well. Um, then the tail is done. You used your tattle tailor and you spread it out. It's drying. Um, we usually let them sit overnight before we bondle the center because there's still um, moist tissue, muscle, and, and little strands of um, flesh that's on those quills. You can't get them perfectly clean. And um, we want that to dry up good before we put our auto body putty. Uh, and then at some point, you want to attach your head. And I think if you if you buy one from if you have one freeze dried, it's going to come with a styrofoam neck. 
and uh, with wires out of it. I think most of them that we get have wires out of them, or if they don't, you can put wires up in them. Um, this one actually comes hollow. This is casting plastic. It's got a little powder up in there. I enlarged it for my for my neck. Um, it's hollow, and we're gonna we're gonna use a piece of one inch foam for a neck. And that one inch foam, um, I want it to slide up in there very, very firm. But of course, that's not gonna hold our neck, so we need wires up in there. What we usually do, I like to end up with a product like this that I can stick down in here. And what I'll usually like to do is I take a piece of um, a nail wire and I will bend it. Could you hand me a uh, pliers? Squeeze this a little closer together. Right there. Jake. And I like to get it close enough together that it's not going to um, be too wide going into the burger. Yeah, that's what I needed. I'm just going to squeeze this a little bit. Now we carry two kinds of wires here, and um, annealed and galvanized. Do you want to tell them the difference in that? I was just going to ask you. Ask you? <laughs> I'm doing all the talking. You got um, No, the, the difference, uh, most visible difference is the galvanized is the shiny wire. That's the easiest to remember and see in the shop when you're looking at the two. And we call yeah. that the dirty wire because, is, because when it comes, it does get your hands all yeah, dirty. We it does. wipe it off with a rag. And we carry straight lengths of both. Um, what are they, three feet maybe? 30 inches? And, um, yeah, probably. Something like probably. that. Um, but, and they come from, I think we have it in four, as low as four gauge up to maybe. Four is heavy. Uh, four is super heavy, um, all the way to 18. 18, maybe. I think, yeah. Um, uh, and um, so, and with wire, the higher the number, the smaller the, the, smaller the diameter. Um, so four and six so, is really heavy. Yep. 16 is. Nice and light, right light wire. Yep. And um, the biggest difference in working with it is that the galvanized wire has a memory, I guess would be the best way to, I can think of to describe it. It, as you bend it, it wants to spring. It wants to go back to its original state where the annealed wire has, um, doesn't have any memory. And so it will hold shape that if you bend a loop into it, it will hold that loop. And um, I think that has to do with heat and how it was made, um, how the wire was formed. But we use it. We use a lot of both. I think we probably use annealed more than galvanized. We used to like use galvanized them, all yeah. the time. But like galvanized, you bend it like that. See, it, it wants to go back all the time to the original shape. Whereas this, you bend it, and it kind of stays where you bend it. There's not as much spring in it. I mean, we use them on fish mounts. We use them in our bird taxidermy. We use wire, oh man, through all of our different processes. When I first started, um, companies didn't carry wire. You couldn't just go out and buy wire. I guess you, you probably could have gone to the hardware store if you knew that electric fence wire would work. But uh, my instructor had me cutting apart coat hangers. Coat hangers? Oh yeah. my goodness. Um, we cut apart coat hangers, straighten them out, and every single duck I ever mounted was mounted with coat hangers. I don't know what gauge it is, it's probably about, you know, 12 gauge, but every bird, every fish was wired with coat hangers. Um, depending on where you got your coat hanger, they were, could be heavier, uh, but it was all coat hangers. You couldn't just buy wire. Um, the way that um, we do our turkey heads, and there's, I mean, there's a lot of you out there probably have really good ways of doing, doing this. This is kind of something we came up with and it works, so we've never changed it. Um, if you measure your turkey, neck. Most turkey necks run 11, 12 inches somewhere from the, that's from the back of the skull to where it joins the body right here at the first vertebrae. Uh, now when you get ahead, don't forget that's not 12 inches from here, that's 12 inches from right here. So you've already got, you've already got probably a good six, seven inches there. So 
oftentimes you do not need a lot of neck. Also, in birds, um, don't forget that that neck comes out of the body here, and in order to get up here, it's got to make kind of a little goose neck like's underneath your sink. Um, it's got to have that tight S coming out of the back of the neck. So if we were to sketch that on the side of our form, say the neck probably comes down here. And then comes back up and around, wouldn't you? I saw a form to like that just the other day <laughs> So it's connected up right here. Right there, right okay. high in the back. And it would come around and make that. Now, move. the reason you don't see a big neck up here is because Corey sculpted this for a strutting bird, and a strutting bird has these inflated air sacs up here, which wrap all the way around the neck. So he's allowed for that neck in there and to make it nice and full so you don't have a big old ridge running down the front of your bird, um, he's filled it up with his air sac. So what we did was we put the tail on, we looked at our reference pictures to see where the head laid on a strutting bird in relationship to the, to the tail, and then we adjusted our head up and down according to that. Because on, on this bird, you really have enough skin. If you wanted to stick him up like that, you probably have enough skin to do it, but it would look pretty silly. Um, once I fold my, my um, wire like this, and I didn't fold it very, very straight, I will measure how much neck I want. And then I will try to keep this somewhat paired. This will never work on live will it <laughs> you know that and I'm gonna try to have it come out kind of hey there you go not bad um, so I had it come out like this and then I will stick it up into my bird bend it in a little bit of a shape of a neck. Now you can put tracheas on these if you want to. Um, mm -hmm. On a turkey, this turkey head mount, we're not gonna. And then this goes up like that, and that can be skewered down into here. Now this is one I made previously. And if we were to put it on, um, Now that looks, that looks very long, but most of it's gonna go up inside of here and it's gonna hold that head nice and strong. You know, and that's gonna be a nice sturdy head. Mm -hmm. So when we get ready to mount the bird, we're gonna leave the neck on and if you want to, you can super glue, you can put a little super glue down those threads. You don't have to, it's not gonna pull out. Um, or you can, you know, bond to it if you think you need to. We're gonna slide this off. And then it's time to mount the bird. We're gonna slide the bird skin around here. Um, and we'll show you how to cock it and things like that. Um, something else I was gonna say. Oh, bird skin. Um, once you skin your turkey, um, remember save the parts. You'll always have use for yeah. turkey parts. We needed some some today. Um, if you have a you know wing feather that's damaged on a flying turkey mount, um, and it'd be really nice to make him look a little more perfect, um, you may have a turkey feather in the freezer. It's always nice to have parts. Um, this bird, this bird had some major damage when we skinned it. He took up. A full load in the front and you guys saved um, this is a feathered part of that bird and it's full of bb holes that we cut out and right. sewed back yeah, together that. Um, so save parts because sometimes especially on a turkey you might have a, a use for um, replacing some feathers and you know you never know when you don't need something so um, go ahead and hand me your bird that you skin here
You have Delia asking about two week courses. Delia, we will give you the information if you want to message us your phone number and address. We'll get some information on the way. Otherwise, you can call us at 1 800 488 3256. And this bird looks way, way, way better than he did a little while ago. Than you thought he was gonna. Uh, and we have enough to do everything right up to his tail, but we just left it on here. And um, this bird was was skinned like we've showed you, you know, skinning mm -hmm. skin different birds. Um, we like to do the up the inseam and across. And he was fleshed. A lot of people use pressure washers to flesh your birds. And a pressure washer works really well in the right hands. Get a practice bird to work on. Um, you can get a, a skin clean very good with a pressure washer. Make sure to watch your distance and watch your angle. Don't spray them too head on, but um, it's a little bit messy, do it outside. Um, we don't usually end up doing our turkeys in the middle of the winter, so so we end up with one big icicle, but it does it does work pretty good. Um, this turkey we fleshed on the box, the big box flesher, I think we showed them last week. Um, the big box with the wire wheel, and those are real easy to make yourself. Just get your um, wood, and whenever I made mine, I made them out of three quarter inch pine, and the big motor and they get a little bit heavy by the time you get done, but they don't vibrate off the table, they'll stay on the table. Um, anyway, you can make them a lot lighter weight. I've seen some nice ones made out of plexiglass tops and that sort of thing. Um, for a big bird like this, turkeys and geese, we tend to use the big box. It fleshes them real nice. Um, once this bird was fleshed, he goes through a series of baths. Go ahead and tell them about our baths. We have a pretty extensive bathing system yeah, for our birds. We do, and, and it seems to make all the difference in the world. Um, the first thing that we do with any bird is cold water. Um, cold water for blood, um, give him a good soak if he's exceptionally, he's ugly with blood, um, or has thawed and you have a lot of um, leakage, you need to get that out first, first and foremost, before you ever any, introduce any hot water, make sure that all of your blood is out of the out of the feathers. So we do a good cold water bath um, and then we take them to the fleshing process. We'll take them through the fleshing machine and, and uh, get them all prettied up on the inside. And from that point, we would start warm water baths um, with Dawn, an additive of Dawn with dish soap. So what, a couple drops of Dawn and you like Dawn. Yeah, it seems to work pretty Dawn well. Dawn cleans and up everything. Dawn cleans up everything. <laughs> She's out front too. <laughs> She's doing we, we, we got another Dawn. Yeah. Um, what, uh, for your cold water bath, if you don't get all the blood off with cold water, what would you use with that? Mm. Um, um, I've used ammonia with some success. Um, like little Bo Peep ammonia we get at the grocery store here. Yeah. Um, ammonia works. Um, they sell all kinds of blood, um, blood release, blood eater. Um, we used to have blood. White? Uh, no, no feather whites for mineral stains, rest. mostly. Um, it's hard to beat cold water. Yeah, cold water seems to be the, the very best cure for, for what our purposes would be. Um, and then we take them through the warm water bath as far as, as long as, we, as it takes to get all of the, um, all of the grease out of it, um, all of, from fleshing, and that's, that could be pretty extensive. Turkeys have a lot, a pretty heavy layer of fat on them, and so uh, they need to they need to be degreased pretty well. So we'll take them through, oh gosh, probably at least three or four baths. You can bathe them during the fleshing process as well. Um, but then, as we introduce Dawn, just as importantly as getting the grease out, we gotta get the soap out. So the next steps would be once he's once he's degreased and you've got all of the all of the um, grease and so forth out of the feathers. The next ones are a warm water rinse um, to start rinsing the soap out of it. What you do before you start mounting any bird is I think the most important step. Like yeah. you just emphasized the, um, the washing. You cannot overestimate how important that the washing is. And like Brett said, um, we have students that wash their birds exceptionally clean and then don't risk, rinse the soap out. Yes. 
Um, we have also seen people many times skin a big old bat, mallard or redhead on their desks, go through all of the bass, they have the most beautiful plumage I've ever seen, and by the time they are got the bird sewn up, it looks terrible, and you look at their table and they didn't clean their table. Make sure that you clean your table and keep a really nice orderly workbench and get all that grease. If there's any residue here, it's transferred into there as you're rolling them out. Um, when Jim Kimball worked for us, he always laid a nice, clean towel and he'd lay the bird on it. What size motor do you use for your turkey? Um, our turkey is a quarter horse motor only because you can find them free almost at any appliance store. They will cost you little or nothing. They're laying around. You'll probably have to put a new cord on them. Um, it's a quarter horse motor. And when you go to those little motors, which are really plenty big enough, um, they're expensive. You know, and they typically don't have those laying around. You gotta order them. And a little bitty motor like that, which is good enough, it's probably a couple hundred bucks. They're very expensive. Look how clean that is. I was gonna say, Jacob, you did a nice job. <laughs> and that was all fleshed on the box. And I have witnesses that said I said that. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was all fleshed on the box. Um, very That's nice and clean. Good job. Real nice and clean. That's now, cool. when, you, when you get ready to mount any bird, um, I'm not a bird expert by any means, but my rule is dry plumage, moist skin. When that skin gets, um, we're a little dry up here. Um, these feathers are not going to be able to be arranged at all until they're re-moistened. Um, this is just perfect. It's really nice and moist, but it's um, um, the plumage is real pretty. If you saw how nice that, that plumage looks, yeah, there's nice not much fluffy. drying. All the way down to the quill. That's right down to the skin. This is nice and fluffy. And if you, um, um, especially on upland game birds, when you start mounting an upland game bird and you got them all sewed up, you're posing them, you're going to hit him with the hair dryer. Um, warm air will dry that skin very fast because they do not have the, the fat in it, I think, to keep it, keep it moist. And uh, it'll dry it too fast. And once the skin dries, it's pretty tough to re-moisten it. And then your feathers are not able to be arranged. So dry plumage, moist skin works very well. Well, should we do something with this thing? I think so. Do you want to do anything to your skin side? Should we put a little Noxema on it? Like uh, this is something that we were showing years and years and years ago. Noxema, like grandma. for those of you that don't know, um, go to any you know grocery store or whatever, and that smells like grandma at Thanksgiving time. <laughs> um, she just powdered herself up and she came down to make her turkey, and that's exactly what grandma <laughs> smells like. Uh, it's a skin moisturizer, and now they have all kinds of fancy moisturizers, but 50 years ago, it was Noxema. We didn't have Revlon, we didn't have Fabergé, it was Noxema, and uh, grandma doesn't change. So what that Noxema will do is it will actually moisten the skin and keep it moist and give you plenty of working time. Um, I've seen people mount a turkey and arrange a turkey in a half hour that looks better than any turkey that I'll ever do. Um, I need time. I need time to arrange feathers. I need working time. Um, this is going to give it to you. It'll keep this skin from drying out. We use it on ducks and we really like it on upland game birds like pheasants, turkeys, grouse, things like that. And the best part about it is if you get it in the plumage, um, it turns into a powder and it blows right out. It does not it does not cling in your feathers, it does not stay in your feathers, it's not greasy or anything. So um, we're just gonna put it, I'm gonna dwell on the skin, but if I were to get it on the feathers, I'm not worried. Tomorrow morning, um, as we're working on him, it will blow right out. You can already see that skin starting to dry a little bit. Yeah, it is. And this should moisten that. We're going to have to moisten that just a little. And Caitlin, you can show them how clean this, how clean these quills are. Um, there's normally a yellow layer of fat there that um, was taken off with the fleshing wheel. Super important that that all goes away and looks just like this at the end. Yeah, when it looks nice and, and gray like this with a minimum of yellow, somebody did a pretty good job. And not much for holes. I've got I've got some BB holes here on this 
bird wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> no, he was definitely angry. Yeah, so much so that we did have to cut that chunk out. I hope it works. I see a little elastrator band on him. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna have a skinny neck. Um, and uh, this doesn't seem to affect any any latex caulk um, that we would put underneath either. So yeah, and it works pretty well. Go ahead and explain the next process. That'll probably be coming up here. What we'll end up doing. Um, yeah. So the next next thing we'll do is slide the skin on. Um, we'll slide it over the mannequin, get it basically aligned where we want it. And then we'll come in behind that as we start to pin things in place um, and we'll inject a uh, latex caulk. And that's going to basically take, take up the space of all of that fat and additional tissue that we took off of those coils and help hold them in place as we position and arrange them. Um, we used to mount turkeys without latex caulk and that was a job, a big job. See, when I started, there were people like Henry, which was itch, itch a monk that, that uh, would write articles on turkeys and, and they'd, he'd said one time, um, it's nearly impossible without, or to mount a turkey without a really um, thick based hide paste, you sure. know, and they were using the old dextrin hide paste. Um, and then all of a sudden somebody said, told me about caulk and I said, caulk, what's caulk? Oh, it's this new stuff they invented for <laughs> windows, you know. That's how long I've been doing this. Yeah. Okay, now I just have a nice even coat. Now, I can feel this skin here is, I don't want to say crusty, but it's drying. You can hear it. And, yeah, you can hear it. And here it's really nice. Just like Grandma's face. <laughs> I can use some of that probably. It's starting to get really. Um, and you can get you can get Noxema at any department store, grocery yeah. store. Tom wants to know how how do you guys dry? Dry a bird? I'm assuming so. Um, we have old vintage vacuum cleaners like Electrolux canister vacuum cleaners, mm -hmm. and that's my favorite um, favorite drying tool. And uh, my wife got them at a garage sale. I said, every Electrolux um, vacuum cleaner you get, get it for me. And we got a couple of them. And they, um, they, uh, we hooked the hose on the blow end and they blow out. They don't get very warm. Heat is not your friend when it comes to drying a bird. It's going to dry too fast. So you want, if it gets a slight bit warm is fine, but just so it doesn't get too warm. And uh, um, like some of your hair dryers, if, if you blow them with a hair dryer to dry them, don't use excessive heat, it dries everything, you know. But we like our vacuum cleaners. A lot of people have the pet groomers and things. That's fine if you keep your distance because yeah. some of them oh, yeah. have a lot of power. Yeah. Um, and we use a solvent too. Oh, yeah, let's tell them about that. Um, um, not inside. <laughs> not inside. Um, once you get done with your baths, if you're drying a bird with water, um, to dry this bird, it might take you three hours to dry and ready to mount. And while you're drying, you gotta keep that um, skin very, very moist. It's very helpful to use a solvent. Um, solvents that people use are gas, lactic yeah, thinner, gas. mineral spirits, Coleman fuel is a favorite one. Um, most of those are very flammable, especially when you get into unleaded gas and Coleman fuel. And um, I think last week I said I can tell stories for the rest of the um, year about taxidermists who have been seriously injured or burnt down buildings and stuff like that using gas. So you want to be real careful. But what it does is it replaces the moisture in your bird skin with something that will evaporate fast. So if you, what we like to do is wash our birds in lacquer thinner and drain them and put them between a towel and squish any excess lacquer thinner out, put them in a tub of borax, powdered borax, and um, in about five minutes, they look like this. But do it outside, be really, really careful. And we do like that. You mentioned the powdered borax. So 
So rather than not the, the kind you get the in the grocery granular. store. Yeah, yeah, not the granular kind. The powdered borax that we sell works really well. To and no tumbler. Sort that. We um, you can tumble. You you can. You certainly. Um, can. I've had many tumblers over the years, and this is so fast and does such a good job. Um, I don't use the tumbler. A tumbler a lot of times I would have a damaged feather now and then, so I kind of prefer doing it this way. But I go back and forth. Okay, now if I could find an opening here, maybe we could stick him on. Okay. Like so? Yeah, grab that. We gotta take him off here or um leave the other table. We got too much to Yeah, I know we gotta kind of here, I'll take him off. There we go. Go ahead. Just a grid board. You don't have to have a grid board if you got a good eye. We have these around here for sculpting. Um, that's why we stuck it on. And then uh, that will, when we put that on and staple it off the back, it will allow us to see where the feathers have to go so they're not hitting the wall. Okay, I'll hold this if you want to slide them on. Ah, I never marked the spot, did I? <laughs> there we go. Did everybody see your big fish you caught? Uh, maybe. Bobby Morris wants to know how many tubes of latex caulk do you use on a full turkey? It, it depends on the body, but we just did one and we figured four. I think four. Yep. Um, four. And um, you want to make sure that. Whenever you, uh, whenever you mount a turkey, what, what we found is the looser the fit, um, you're going to need a little more caulk, but they mount much nicer. nicer. Yeah. I don't know that you'll find many people that like to mount a tight bird skin. This seems to be a... Can you put this on? Yeah. Uh-oh. The kennel's open. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that, he's looking turkey-ish already. I think it's going to work. I think so. Should we start trimming? That's better than Jacob said it was going to be. I know. Yeah, now we have stuff. over here we have big, big wing wing holes and I think those are going to come right off the back. And they should they should sit right behind that shoulder, shouldn't they? I might get um, some pins. Anytime you, anytime you're going around something, you can keep going here. No. Um, anytime you're, give me a center down here and I'll stick the pin in. Um, anytime you're going around, whether it's a back of a deer mannequin, you know, stapling off or an antler mount or whatever it happens to be, um, if you start at one end and start stapling or pinning all the way around, you're going to either have to gather or you're going to run out of stretching material. And uh, so we like to divide things in half. So if he can find out where that breast comes down, where the beard is down the center, we just stick one pin in that mannequin and then we will see where the wings were, stretch them off evenly and put a pin there. Is that a good spot? Yeah, that's, that will be the center of our mannequin right there. It's gonna show if the neck comes down. And so we'll just come here and you find this little groove here between the the different feather tracks, and we'll bring that down and put a pin in right there. Like I think so. Ow! That must have been you. 
I was waiting for oh, the Oh, we got to talk to the people down in the mannequin department here. There we go. There we go. That's good. Now, do one, one on the back and we'll put one. Hmm? I can one up hold over it. the back. I'll hold this and you figure out where the back is. Hmm. And again, we're just going to kind of lift the, lift the skin up. Get underneath it. Find our wings. Feather groups. Over okay. About right there. And most of you know by now, if you're in this business, taxidermy means to arrange the dermis. And that's what we're doing. Now, what do you got for a wink? You ready for a scalpel? No. No? Yeah, maybe. You scared the cut. <laughs> yeah. And we could get rid of some of this, though. We could certainly get rid of it. Um, the majority of this back here. Oh, we got one. Yeah, Jacob provided scalpel. I'm going to give you a towel to lay down. Oh, nice. So that doesn't get too nice pink towel. Now, as we're doing, we show you a lot of different things. Um, this program is is not so much geared to people who want to learn taxidermy as much as taxidermists who um, do it and they want to see another method of doing it or we show a few advanced things. Um, we are fielding a whole lot of calls from beginners who, um, I've got this buffalo and I think I'm going to tan it. Can you walk me through what I'm going to have to uh, buy to tan it? And uh, that's, not, that's not what we're for. Um, we're kind of just trying to help the taxidermist with show showcase new products and new techniques and things like that. So are you on the phone a little too much these days? I'm on the phone, phone all the time. Um, um, Shockwar Outdoors says congratulations on that musky bit. Oh, that was yeah. a nice fish. Thank you. Thank you. That was something. Okay, so I've got the back of the form is right here, and because I'm chicken or turkey sure. today, we know he's trim. I'm gonna take just this large portion just to start breaking this down some. So I'm gonna come in here, part the feathers, no point in cutting through feathers, that makes a bit of a mess. I'm just gonna cut through skin and shorten this up like that. Now some sometimes also we have customers that watch these. And, uh, <laughs> they all, they'll see, wow, they had that turkey looking pretty good and it only took them an hour. Um, they did not see the eight hours of fleshing <laughs> the a turkey work. and the three hours of washing and uh, it's we we do a lot of behind the scenes work to make these projects come out for you people. Very true. <laughs> ever mount morning does on your podcast? I don't think no, I've ever no, wanted no, to no. do that. No. no, thank you. I've done a couple and I don't think I'll ever do another one. I'm Why just, is that? Um, they take talent. They're a very, <laughs> very they take talent. Um, they're a very fragile bird. Um, they're very thin skinned. Um, now save that. That's a great thing to save. And if you're ever doing a tail mount, um, these things are these little rump feathers are critical. Yeah. Okay. So we've gotten shortened up now. I think I left a great plenty, probably more than we needed, but um, now. Should we put the wings in place? Sure. Let's see if we can pin those. Find out where those are gonna go for you. Um, no, a morning dove. I don't remember how the morning dove looked that I did, but I can guess. <laughs> I'm thinking. I don't remember an upset customer, but I don't remember anybody doing handstands because <laughs> it looks so pretty. Maybe not those. Um, there's some good there. dove mounters. There are. Is that the spot? Hi. I think we might start somewhere in here. And again, we're just trying to arrange this. Hold in the yeah, yep. Yeah. Probably get Dakota here to do some birds. There you go. Some crazy birds. Mm hmm. Yeah, and this bird, that piece of skin that Tom showed you came from right here. This bird got hit right in the neck. Yeah, very, he was, very it, hard. it couldn't have been a worse spot. Um, so okay. we're going to deal with that, too. Should we um, glue on the head? 
I think so, sure. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to like and share this video to be entered for our giveaway next Thursday live. Um, and after you share it, make sure to comment, shared in the comment section. We have 28 shares that are in the drawing for the turkey tailor oh, wow. from last week's. Nice. So your odds are fairly good. So make sure to share it for next week's chance to win. And so we're going to like and share this week for a chance to win next week. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they have all week to do it. So if you don't catch the video live, you can always share it all the way up until next Thursday. Tom's just grabbing a couple of things here. We're going to glue this head in place, glue our skin in place. products, Mandy. Do we have any new products that you need to tell them about? We do have back in our Krylon clear glaze you can get on the site. That's back in. That was discontinued for a while. That's back. Um, Pro 1. Got Pro 1. What's the big deal about Pro 1? Big deal is we're carrying it now, and we're in the speedy zone. Speedy is zone is the big people. deal. That's right. It's, it's a huge. good product, but shipping that those heavy things is very difficult. And speedy is the tax from a sprint. You went to get a new bottle. No. Oh. New bottle, super good. New bottle. I tried your little syringe. I probably it's gone. Isn't it? No, it's there. Oh, but it's, it's hard. Done. It's done. Big syringe. And um, do we want to put anything up in? Oh, it's pretty sturdy, I think. Good. Speedy. Thank you. Very speedy good. delivery. That's as speedy as it gets. Now, we have a, we use this on all our bird. Um, bird heads and things like that. Mm -hmm. It's a SIG medium viscosity. Um, we like to take this super glue. It's not a real drippy super glue, but it's not a gel. Uh, we use these little extensions and we put a little bit of glue on the inside of the extension, squeeze it on like that, and it will give you a real precise little amount of glue like that. Me? <laughs> what if I spill it? Here, I'll hold it for you. So we're just gonna glue that skin right up along the back side. We might need a little I water, think, I'm thinking. Yeah, I think that's a little dry. Hold it. Yeah. And basically, we, you can see the, the area in the back of the neck of the bird that is recessed to allow the skin. We're gonna bring the skin right up there. Um, actually, it looks like we've, we've skinned our bird a little further up than the than the artificial head. So I think we'll trim that just a little bit. I think we can trim some of that, can't we? Good. You want me to do um, a little yeah. spritz down yeah, here? please. Yeah, and all you have to do is look at how much you have, and that'll tell you how much to trim off. Yeah, you can see there's there's a good deal of space right there. That'll be That'll make a nice transition, so we're gonna come right up here and just take that off. Like so. And anytime you're gonna glue, especially around a bird head or around any perimeter, um, it's nice to start in, in a center in one place, and then you might move around from here to the corner and the corner, and then glue everything in between so that we're not starting so that we don't start in one place and work our way around and at the end find out that we're off. So now you want to flush your skins really, really good around these areas because um, if you have a lot of oil on that skin, it's not going to stick. 
Yeah. So I've just got just a nice little crescent there. And then we're gonna bring that skin right up against there, keeping the feathers out. Key. Just gonna tuck that right up there, like so. And this glue gives you kind of a decent amount of time to arrange things. It's not instant, instant. Right, so I can see I've got a corner to my skin right here, and I've got a corner right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and anchor that little corner in place. So, and then I'm just going to lift this back and glue everything in between. Good sharp little tweezers are make all the difference when you're trying to do this precise work. Now if you use a freeze-dried head you're gonna have a, a um, ledge of skin that you can actually tuck this skin underneath. Okay. And we'll go over here and we'll do the same thing. We'll locate that same corner. And we're gonna bring that right up there. Says that he just got back into his pro one high pace after a couple of months, and he's wondering if he can add a little water to it so it's not so thick. He sure can, um, and warm water works really well, but I wouldn't add a bunch. And another trick that I saw at one of the seminars not too terribly long ago is to take your pro one and whip it um, with a with a drill because it was naughty. <laughs> yeah because it was naughty. Um, yeah, but if you uh, whip it with a drill, it uh, gets a really nice body to it. Um, nice and creamy, but still um, uh, maintains some of that nice thickness. Real workable. And the Spencer Fairs this weekend. Anybody coming up to the Spencer Fair, make sure oh, yeah. to stop in and say hi. Largest county fair in the world. That's right. We have to find a new route to work now. I know you will, won't you? Yes. Yes, indeed. And then we've got we could go still yet around the perimeter, but um... what's your favorite fair food? Ooh. Oh, oh, that should be a that should be a question. Question. Mm -hmm. Comment ask. in your favorite fair food. Yeah. Roast beef Sundays. Ooh, those Ooh. are good. those are good. Those are good. Roast okay. beef Sundays. Everything now, it seems like. Spencer Fair has the biggest pork tenderloins I've ever seen. Those are good ones. I don't know. You can't go wrong with the arrow. I like the chicken wrapped in wa deep fried waffle on a stick. Mm. Chicken? Chicken uh -huh. waffles. Chicken waffles. Has anyone had the deep fried butter? I have not, but I've heard of that in candy bars. Deep Mini donuts. Candy bars. Can't go wrong with those. The Steak problem sandwich. is you just can't. Do it all. No. I will say cheese curds. I have to have a thing of cheese curds every time. I don't even need ranch with those cheese curds. Brent goes for the pizza. Godfather's pizza. Pizza. I know every <laughs> time. Fair. I know. Yeah. Do they not have that in Spencer? Godfather's. Yeah, they do. It's something different about the mm. single slices. Makes sense. Tom Dodder says fried dough. That sounds interesting. Funnel cakes. Funnel cakes, yeah. Funnel steak cakes. sandwiches, corn dogs, and deep fried spicy pickles. Oof, Car corn bread, dogs are hard to beat, too. Deep fried pickles sounds terrible. Oh, fried pickles are good. Oh, fried pickles are really good. No way. Oh, yes. I don't like not deep fried Oof. pickles. Yeah, that's They're true. good. Mandy's not a pickle. Cheese curds. I'm with you, Rob. Okay. 
Whoops. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, just a little more to go around the side here. Oh, <laughs> I saw Blake, a you should be doing this. Breakthrough ad, which looked very nice. Yes. Seen lots of our little uh, friends and award winners in that breakthrough ad this year. That was pretty fun. And when you get these bodies, whether it's a, whether it's a uh, breast mount or, or life-size turkey mount, um, a lot of them go by weight, not so much size. Like our um, wood ducks go by length and girth, mallards, you know, they go by length and a girth, but um, turkeys, you can buy them by size. So um, the other day we uh, skinned a turkey and we just weighed him and I think he weighed 22 pounds and, and uh, you can look in our catalog and it'll tell you which body? I think we're glued around the perimeter. And now it's just gonna be a matter of arranging, pinning. And we're gonna caulk. Um, yep, we're gonna put some caulk in the backside. Um, and the caulk we use is um, siliconized acrylic caulk. We use acrylic because typically that's water-based. And uh, you, if you get it in the feathers, which we're apt to do, um, it's nice to be able to get it out with water. If you don't get it out with water in time, uh, usually mineral spirits the next day will take care of it. And uh, if we're doing a, a life-size turkey, we'll even put a big plastic tube on the end of it and then stick a pin through here and the tube so it can't pull off. And we will actually stick the, the cock tube down in the breast and we will give equal amounts to both sides of the breast. Um, we'll use any place you need loft in your feathers. We want those, um, we want these to be able to manipulate them, stay where they are, the back of the neck. Um, we want to stand up. The rump we like to have stand up. So with a good layer of caulk underneath, about a quarter inch of caulk, um, that makes that really, really easy. So the next thing we probably do with this one, we're running out of time, but we would inject caulk up in the breast. We will, um, a little bit on the back, we will start stapling them off, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll take our stapler, just like we do the back of our deer heads, and we'll staple him around the perimeter, and then probably screw him back to the sure. mounting board, and then arrange these feathers so they're not all laying funny against the board, so they meet the board real nice. And whenever you cock a turkey, um, usually we find the, the next two days are the best times to adjust your feathers. Um, you'll cock them and they won't stay where you want them to be and you'll think that cock doesn't work. But usually um, give it a day or two and when you put a feather up, it's gonna stay up. If you move it left or right, it's gonna stay left or right. All right, and I think it's time to announce last week's winner. Um, we are giving away the tattletale that we used um, so our winners are either Rob Realmsum or Mark Barber, whoever wants to chime in first. Ooh, I know Rob's watching. He just commented cheese curds. <laughs> Tell Taylor, that's a good product. Yeah. And so for those of you that have missed, um, haven't, didn't see us using that, you can go back and watch on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. Great product by Ray Murphy. All right, and it looks like Rob is here, so congratulations on your new tattletale. You're gonna like it. And make sure you like and share this video for your chance to win next week. What are you guys doing next week? I told you she would ask. We, we talked about you asking. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, I think, wasn't it Rob that requested this one from last he week? Did. What do you guys want to see? Let us know what you want to and see. You're, you're going to miss the best part. The best part is once you've caught them and after a day, this is what's the fun part of a turkey, spawning a turkey. How long will that take you? Um, if you want a really nice job, it takes me a while. Some people shake them and call them good, but I... Shake them up good like this? I, it takes me a while to do a nice turkey. I'm not a, I'm not a flake type turkey person. So chime in, let us know. Um, give us a call 1-800-488-3256 or visit us online at www.matuskataxremy.com. For those of you that are watching to just learn tax for me, if you haven't um, gone to a school and you're interested, these videos are definitely helpful, but we do have an amazing nine week residential course right here in Spirit Lake, Iowa, Northwest corner, right on the Minnesota border. So definitely come visit, check us out. If those of you that saw Brett's little musky catch that was in our lakes area. So uh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> no, you can do that. Come visit. Um, give us a call if you're interested in school or an advanced class as well. All right, and we will see you guys next week.